Gulf of Bothnia, Western Finland is known for its long, cold winters. The land here is very flat, and the marshy, spring-fed fields often freeze completely over during the winter. In the mid-1880s, a few miles from the coast, farmers building drainage ditches in a boggy field uncover an astonishing scene. Buried in the mud, they find bones, and multiple human remains submerged in their lush fields. Over the next century, multiple teams of archaeologists investigate the site known as Levenluta. Altogether, hundreds of broken pieces of bones and multiple skulls were eventually found scattered and mixed together in the soft, muddy soil. After a thorough search, a total of 153 pounds of human bones were recovered from the field. Researchers painstakingly count and analyze the bones, piecing fragments together, and they determine that the field contains the remains of at least 98 different individuals. How did these people end up buried in the mud in a farmer's field? This area has been farmland for centuries. There are no grave markers or memorials that give any indication of who they are. And the locals have no knowledge of a cemetery nearby. Whoever these people are, they've been here a long time. Carbon dating on the bones reveals they date sometime between the 4th and 9th centuries. So these people are from the early Iron Age. They predate the Vikings. Could this be the remains of an ancient cemetery? Other early Iron Age cemetery sites in Finland show that at the time, bodies were primarily cremated. So finding the bones of this many bodies from that period is highly unusual. The bones are scattered and mixed together and don't appear to be laid out in an ordered way like you'd expect if this was a cemetery. When bones are found scattered like this at a site, sometimes it's determined to be the remains of a battle. The bodies lie where the soldiers fall, and over time, they get mixed together. But if this was the site of a battle, and these were fallen heroes, then where are all the weapons? I mean, there's no armor, there are no buckles. There are very few artifacts here other than bones. Five metal brooches and 10 decorative arm rings had been found in the mud at the site. Not exactly the cache of weapons you'd expect to find if this was the site of a battle. The armbands are all made in styles that were popular from the 5th to 8th centuries. So it's possible that these people didn't all die at once, and that they were placed there intentionally over a span of many years. In some ancient Nordic cultures, boggy and marshy areas were considered scary and mystical places. Bogs were used as places to sacrifice people to appease the gods, or to bury someone as a form of demeaning punishment. They were thought to be the gateway to a dark afterworld. The idea was that the dark spirits would torment the deceased as a punishment. Many individual, well-preserved bodies have been found in bogs across England, Denmark, and many areas of Northern Europe. The chemicals from the peat moss and the lack of oxygen in most bogs prevent bacterial decay in organic matter and preserve the bodies perfectly. It's incredible. We can see every minute detail of these people's faces and every injury revealing how they died, whether it's by slit throat or by a blow to the head from behind. But at this site, only the bones remain. So perhaps Levan Luta was a place where people in the community were buried or sacrificed. The population in the area at that time wouldn't have been that large. So 98 would have been a considerable number of people to be sacrificed or punished for wrongdoing even over a period of many years. The archaeologists noticed that the deceased show no signs of trauma or head injuries that would indicate they were killed or injured on purpose. And while studying the bones and skulls further, they make a startling discovery. The length of the femur bones and the shape of the pelvis suggest what age and gender the deceased are. And of the 98 bodies, they determine that only a small percentage are men. The bones here are predominantly those of women and children. It's really unusual to find a site like this. Separating out the women and children is intentional. It wouldn't have just happened randomly. If the bodies were brought to the site intentionally, then why are the bones all jumbled up? I mean, it's almost like they just dumped them on top of each other. 
Biologists look at samples of the muddy soil and discover that it contains interesting plant remains. White lilies and other plants that live in water were present at the time some of the bodies were placed here. So it's possible that during the Iron Age, this area wouldn't have been a marshy field, but actually a lake or a large pond. It's likely that the water's freezing and thawing cycle moved and mixed the bones around over hundreds of years. But if it was a lake, why would they choose to bury their dead in it? Archaeologists see a number of large wooden poles made of birch wood planted vertically like flagpoles. The poles were found amongst the bones, and they were clearly placed there in the earth in a very specific manner. But why? If this was a lake, and you're trying to keep a body underwater, you'd need something to hold it down. There is evidence of trees and branches being used to weigh the bodies down in the water. So perhaps the same thing is going on here. Researchers determined that in Levenluta, multiple poles were used to hold the bodies down under the water. Whoever did this was going to great lengths to keep the dead submerged. The archaeologists suggest this place wasn't a site for unceremonial bog burials, but was instead a unique graveyard for women and children. This tradition is like nothing else found in that area during that time period. So who were the people with such complex and unusual burial practices? DNA analysis of bones reveals the background of some of the people whose remains were found. They appear to be most closely related to the Sami, the indigenous people from northern Scandinavia. This is fascinating. It means that the Sami, who today live mostly in the north of Scandinavia, had been living much further south 1,500 years ago. The Sami have a belief that some spring-fed lakes are sacred places called Saiva. These magical lakes have a double bottom, and underneath, access through the water, is an identical upside-down lake in the world of the spirits. The field at Levan Luta is currently drier, but there are a number of springs in the area that create the marshy conditions. So it's entirely possible that this was a spring-fed lake at one time. Saiva were thought to be the homes of the spirits and the dead, so sacrificial offerings were made to the water. So as these people were related to the Sami, perhaps these unusual water burials were carried out for religious or ritual purposes. Researchers continue to investigate the site and the bones, testing their DNA, hoping there may still be answers buried in the frozen marsh. In May 2007, in Russia's Yamal Peninsula, a Nenets reindeer herder walks alongside the thawing Uribe River. An unusual scene catches his attention. Parts of a frozen animal are stuck in the permafrost and are rising out of the damp snow. At first, he thinks that it could be a dead reindeer, and he approaches the remains to get a better look. But he quickly realizes this is something he's never seen before. What could it be? The creature is removed from the permafrost, and its remains were taken to a lab for deeper analysis to confirm what species it actually is. The frozen ground has mummified this creature incredibly well. That includes a treasure trove of DNA that is very usable. Analysis of its well-preserved DNA reveals that the animal is a baby mammoth. The DNA sample is so strong, scientists can even tell it belonged to a distinct population of the species called Mammothus primogenus. Mammoths roamed the Northern Hemisphere for millions of years. But what's shocking about this discovery is just how well-preserved this baby mammoth is. Other than some damage to her right ear and tail, the flesh, the muscles, the internal organs, the milk tusks and teeth are all untouched. Even the eyelashes are intact. This baby mammoth calf looks like it just drifted off to sleep and never woke up. Radiocarbon dating reveals that this baby mammoth died some 40,000 years ago. 
This was a time when humans and mammoths coexisted in Siberia. To survive the long winter months, mammoths became the prime target for Paleolithic hunters. They would gather in groups and use their long spears to attack and kill them. But there are no wounds of any kind on this mammoth's body. This suggests it wasn't killed by Stone Age hunters. There's no evidence of human interference at all. So what happened to it? After performing DNA analysis, Russian researchers identify the calf as female and call her Lyuba, after the wife of the reindeer herder who discovered her. To learn more about this miraculous baby mammoth, the scientists began an autopsy. By studying her premolars and milk tusks, they learned that she was born in the late spring and was only one month old when she died. She was an infant, completely dependent on her mother for survival. And like most mammals, her mother would have done anything to protect her baby. Did she become separated from her mother and starve to death? The scientists examined Liuba's 40,000-year-old stomach and intestine. They find traces of her mother's milk. The discovery of fresh milk in her stomach means Liuba didn't die of starvation. But milk is the least strange substance found in this baby mammoth's stomach. Researchers also found poo. Specifically, it's adult mammoth feces, and quite likely to be Liuba's mother's. Interestingly, this is actually a behavior that we see in elephants today. Modern-day elephant calves eat their mother's feces to inoculate their guts with their microbes in preparation for digesting plants as they grow. From this mummified baby, the researchers are getting a vivid image of how mammoths lived 40,000 years ago. It's astonishing. The researchers continue to examine Liuba, determined to uncover as much detail as possible. They examine a hump of fat on the back of her neck. Using an electric drill, they take a sample for further analysis. The scientists believe that the fat is actually brown fat, which is a great store of energy, similar to a camel's hump. This fat would have helped keep the infant mammoth warm in the freezing Arctic. Some researchers even believe it would have allowed mammoths to be born earlier in the spring, allowing them to be in better condition to survive their first brutal Arctic winter. Her general appearance and the healthy hump of fat on the back of her neck suggests Lioba was in excellent health at the time of her death. If she didn't die of starvation, perhaps she died from a disease? Another baby mammoth had been excavated around the same time as Liuba in northeastern Russia. Scientists suspected that mammoth possibly died from an anthrax infection. It's possible Liuba met a similar fate. Anthrax bacteria are known to have infected animals on the tundra going back hundreds of thousands of years. The scientists know that with an anthrax infection, sores or lesions can appear on the bodies of infected animals. But Liuba doesn't have any lesions like that at all. In fact, her appearance, her full stomach, and back fat hump indicate she was as healthy as she could be. So, what killed Liuba? Puzzled by the possible cause of Lioba's death, scientists performed CT scans on her. With a 3D model of her body, researchers could see Lioba's internal anatomy without cutting her apart. The scans revealed something extraordinary. Parts of her trunk and trachea were filled with sediment. It seems like she inhaled a great deal of mud. Researchers extract minerals from the inhaled sediment and conclude that it came from a cold, oxygen-deprived environment, like a riverbed. Now we're getting a pretty graphic idea of what probably killed Liuba. She probably drowned, and in the process, she panicked, inhaling a bunch of water and mud. But there's still one lingering question the scientists want answered. Liuba's body is so well-preserved, it really looks like she just drowned yesterday. It's incredible. But how is her body in such good condition? Scientists reason that after Lioba drowned, the sediment-heavy river or swamp froze around her. And that's a stable, physical, chemical environment in which oxygen is deprived. And the bacterial process that normally degrades organic tissue are slowed to a complete pause. But again, that's relatively common. And something unique happened to Lioba. So what was it? <laughs> 